inflammation is actual killer because these inflammatory cytokine inflammatory process increase that leads to aging. If that's the case, you need something to modulate that inflammation if inflammation is the actual killer. Let's say you're in the area of regenerative medicine and you want to prevent aging and stuff. Wouldn't that be a part of that is to eliminate the, the risks or decrease the risk of a cancerous condition? Or? That would be difficult uh, to answer. So aging, it's a very broad uh, like a terminology. So one of the aging uh, aspects that I was reading about recently is inflammation. Inflammation is actually a killer. Because these inflammatory cytokine inflammatory process increase that leads to aging. If that's the case, you need something to modulate that inflammation. If inflammation is the actual killer, yep. then in that case, you would need something like mesenchymal stem cell or mesenchymal stem cell exosome, something that modulate immune system. Even DC. So DC they have two types: <clears throat> the one that activates or the one that suppress. Yes. The one that suppressed, we call it tolerogenic DC. So technically, you can get tolerogenic DC culture, get the exosome from it, inject it to the patient using as an anti-inflammatory or anti-aging process. Yes, we can. What I look for is, is wellness. You work with conditions-specific uh, things. I'm more general wellness, anti-aging. I want to stay young and, you know, I want to stay 20 the rest of my life. That's good. <laughs> I tell you what to do. Ketogenic diet plus exercise. This is what I do every day. Actually, it's funny. Uh, there's an article published a um, few weeks ago, a few months ago. They did some studies on Navy SEALs. They realized that if they put them on ketogenic diet, their uh, capacity in terms of uh, operation and you know uh, potential would be higher than normal diet. So they are thinking maybe they should put those people on a ketogenic diet. Well, and that also, you have a stimulation of your stem cells and your, a lot of regenerative. Yeah, actually, this uh, food starvation activates some uh, stem cells in the body. So it's, yeah. it's really scientific. And there's a, there's a, like a published paper a few years ago. They did some uh, testing where uh, they put people through fasting, extreme fasting. Yes. And they realized that the fasting, you know, is more activating their, uh, you know, uh, hematopoietic stem cells. Yes. So realize that if people do fasting, they have more uh, active, they have more uh, active embryo, uh, like hematopoietic stem cell that can lead to regeneration in uh, homeostasis. So this is just one example that how this food and, uh, you know, uh, diet can affect. Diet uh, is so important. Our, there's now a lot of papers showing that the diet significantly, even an overnight diet, uh, with uh, like a high carb diet with, uh, that can affect gene methylation pattern overnight. That's crazy. I saw, I was attending a conference. They did some animal studies where they fed the mice over with heavy carbohydrate. Then they took those cells, do the, uh, gene analysis. They did see even overnight feeding can affect gene, gene methylation. It's so, the body is so responding, which is amazing. You know, we just, uh, people thought that methylation would be very lucky, stable. Then, even if it's changing, but not at the level of overnight feeding, then you change the methylation in the body. That's just, just new, new science. So it's, the body is so smart and dynamic. Sorry for the interruption again. To find out more about this speaker, become a speaker on our show, have Dr. Carter present at your event or podcast, learn more about coaching, consulting, tissue allographs, exosomes, supplements, legal help, or how to create a million-dollar business card and dominate your area, we're here to help you. Just text your name and any question to 
one, two, three, one. Write that down. That's five, six, one, nine, six, two, one, two, three, one. Or go to our website at drrosscarter.com to learn more. On with the show. Now with the methylation, what is it doing exactly with the methylation? The pattern changed. When the pattern of med- med- methylation changed, the type of genes that are expressed changed. Right. You're talking epigenetics here. Exactly. Exactly. I love epigenetic stuff because here's the thing, exosomes, talk about what about exosomes in, in com- or uh, how do they affect the uh, epigenetics of a person? Do they change the methylation? <laughs> Very good question. I don't know anybody who has done that, but uh, directly I don't uh, think they do affect methylation unless they carry some enzyme that affect the methylation or in a base case scenario, if they do change methylation, mm-hmm. the way it's going to work, they go to the body, obtaining, obtaining by macrophage or dendritic cells. Yes. That reprogramming of that cells can lead to methylation change. How? I don't know, to be honest, at this point. But even if it's going to have a bigger impact on the change of the methylation, Possibly after uptaken by the uh, whatever cells, monocyte or dendritic, dendritic cell, those are gonna be re-educated. They secrete more, uh, like uh, let's say, anti-inflammatory factors. That that signal can change methylation pattern of any target cells. So I assume it would be indirect uh, effect rather than direct methylation change. What about the effect on senescence? Senescence, I think it would be direct because <clears throat> there are many reports showing that these exosomes carry anti-apoptotic factors. So uptaken by the cells and reduce some apoptosis processes and you know uh, whatever leads to cell death, especially considering inflammation as one of the senescence or aging. So if they reduce the anti-inflammatory responses in the long run, you're going to get less senescence. And for the direct effect, when the cells are dying, when you inject these exosomes, so they're going to reduce so those um, uh, apoptosis effect and uh, with uh, whatever the, uh, protein or uh, RNA they carry or the signal they carry. So there is a lot of data showing that these exosomes can be anti-apoptotic. So, so they can take a non-functioning, you know, zombie cell really and turn it back into a functioning cell? Again, it doesn't do miracle. If the cell is committed to apoptosis to die, it's committed. But if it's in a pre-apoptosis scenario where they haven't dead, they are not dead yet, potentially exome coming can help, you know, with the survival. But that's with a regular cell, right? But what about a senescent cell that's just, that's supposed to have died and it's just kind of hanging out and producing inflammation? If the, uh, that could be uptaken by, uh, Exome could be uptaken by senescent sense, senescent cell, if they are contributing to inflammatory responses. Yes, they block that inflammatory uh, processes, uh, blocking that. Uh, but not turn them back into normal cells. Just block the inflammation. No, no, I, I doubt. I doubt. 